Lily made a massive and extremely interesting move with Reta True Tide today with the FDA. They're suing the FDA. And I want you to understand what the implications are here, but you're going to have to be one of those GLP nerds and stick with me all the way to the end to really fully understand this. So this is a Deep Tracks Reta True Tide video. Let's learn something today. When a drug company files for a patent on a new molecule that they invent, the clock starts ticking on that patent the moment that they are granted that patent. In Terzepatide's case, Manjaro and Zepbound, the patent started in 2016. In Redotrutide's case, it was just two years later, in 2018, that the patent was granted. So for both Terzepatide and Redotrutide, respectively, the 20-year clock started and Terzepatide will expire in 2036, Redotrutide in 2038. If you're like me, you just assume, well, in 2036, we'll get generic terzepatide, and in 2038, we'll get generic retitrutide. Not so fast. In addition to your 20-year patent, you basically get five years for a drug, five years from the time the drug hits the market, where you get complete exclusivity. It means it doesn't matter if your patent is challenged in court, nobody can make your drug in generic form for at least five years. After that five years is up, basically your patent can be challenged, right? The validity of your patent then is fair game to be challenged in court, which could open the doors for generic versions to come way before that 20 years on that clock is done ticking. We are actually seeing this with semaglutide right now. Patents are being challenged on semaglutide. Semaglutide's patent, which is set to expire in 2031, is already facing scrutiny and challenges in court. So now we get to the fight in court between the FDA and Lilly over retitrutide. If retitrutide, like terzepatide, is simply classified as a normal small molecule drug, they only have five years until their patent can be challenged in court, which means the clock started on Manjaro in 2022. That means starting in 2027, you could see somebody come onto the scene, want to make terzepatide, they'll be able to at that point, but they will have to win a challenge in court on the patents to bring it to market. If Eli Lilly gets a designation as a biologic, the difference being a drug is basically a small molecule manufactured with a chemical process where a biologic, a typically a much more complex manufacturing process involving li living organisms like a antibody or a protein. If Lilly were to get designation for retitrutide as a biologic, which the FDA hasn't wanted to give them up to this point, instead of getting five years of exclusivity once it gets on the market, they will enjoy 12 years of exclusivity before anyone can legally challenge their patent in court. That's the difference of an additional seven years on the market that retitrutide would have with absolutely no biosimilars available to challenge its price. Oh, and biologics tend to command a higher price in the market. This will be another interesting one to see. Could Eli Lilly be testing the waters of the Chevron case to basically challenge the FDA's authority to determine whether or not retitrutide is a biologic? But this will make a huge difference in the accessibility and the affordability of this medication to patients if Eli Lilly were to win this one. If you found this video insightful, helpful, interesting, please share it somewhere and make sure that you follow the channel for more updates just like this.